In today's video, we take a look at the helicopter lure. Is this the worst lure ever made? We're gonna find out. By the way, it's good to be back. Everybody, what's going on? Brendan Miller here, back with another video. Welcome back to a new series on my channel titled Weird Fishing Lures, because that's what we're gonna do on this show. We're gonna take a look at weird, obscure fishing lures from the past, the future, and even the present, and we're gonna just take a look at them, see what they're about, see if they actually catch fish. And what a better way to start off this series than with a classic lure, the helicopter lure. Now, this lure originally came on my radar a number of years ago when I made a video about the banjo minnow. I made a video about the banjo minnow and I asked the question, is this the worst lure ever made? And somebody wrote down in the comments and said, no, this is not the worst lure ever made. The worst lure ever made is the helicopter lure. So recently when I was trying to figure out video ideas, that comment popped back into my head, helicopter lure. So I simply Googled helicopter lure and wow. This is a weird one. I was actually able to find these on eBay and these are in the original packaging. Now I'm not totally sure when this lure was actually mass marketed, but judging by the infomercial that I watched and the overall packaging and the font, I would say sometime in the 80s or the 90s. If you guys know what year this was actually made available, uh, let me know down in the comments below. So yeah, here is the helicopter lure. Well, what is the helicopter lure? So I will say straight off the bat, this bait does its name justice. This bait looks like a helicopter or a propeller or something like that. As you can see, this is the lure right here. This is it. You basically have this Sanko style body and then these three little fins out the back. It actually reminds me of like a propeller off a boat, which will actually make a lot of sense when we come to actually talking about the action of this bait. But yeah, this is the bait. Very, very simple, very weird. Again, I can't get over how weird this bait looks. This bait is made of soft plastic, as you can see right here. This lure was endorsed by none other than bass fishing legend, my boy, Roland Martin. There actually is infomercials on YouTube. You can actually go search them and you can find Roland Martin catching all kinds of bass and talking about how insanely cool this lure is. And that is one of the main things that I think is a turnoff for people is these old cheesy infomercials that just hype the absolute snot out of a lure and make it seem like it's the best lure on planet Earth. This packaging even says, as seen on TV. So no doubt these infomercials were plastered all over the place. One of the most interesting things that I found in my research for this bait is a recent YouTube video. Like this YouTube video has been uploaded in the last couple of years. It's a video of Roland Martin actually breaking out these old lures and fishing with them. And he talks a little bit about the marketing for this lure and kind of what went down as far as that goes. It's actually really interesting. And he actually says that the marketing for this lure was in his words, a little bit hokey. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you Roland on that one. The main thing that boggles my mind with this fishing lure is that it doesn't look like anything living. It looks like the propeller off a ship. Now, generally speaking, when you make fishing lures, you try to make them so that they imitate some sort of prey or something that looks alive in the water column. For instance, bass eat bluegill, so you can buy bluegill style baits. As you can see right here, here's one. This is a cheap bluegill swim bait, and this is also a bluegill patterned square bill crankbait. The goal of these baits is to imitate bluegill. But with this thing, I have no idea what they're trying to imitate. Now, I'm not saying that every fishing lure has to be realistic when you put it in the water. For crying out loud, I designed this worm right here, and this thing doesn't look that realistic, honestly. But, however, when you put it in the water and you twitch it, it actually looks like something trying to swim in the water. And I believe there is an element of presenting something that is unique and different that can get a bass's attention and cause it to strike. So I guess that's the category that this bait falls into. This bait is so out there and it is so weird that maybe if you were fishing a heavily pressured lake or a body of water where the fish were pressured like crazy, throwing something this weird could get you some bites. With that in mind, let's take this bait out on the water and see if we can catch a fish with it and see what the action is like. Alrighty guys, so I'm out here at the first fishing spot of the day. It's this canal behind me. Um, I have caught a decent bass out of here in the past, so I figured I'd give this spot a shot. 
that just rhymed really, really well. Anyway, here is the uh, infamous helicopter lure right here. I'm gonna try and use all the original rigging equipment that came with this. It's uh, it's really weird looking, honestly. It looks like a weird spaceship kind of thing. I'm not sure what it is. But yeah, you get a number of these in the box and then you also get a hook, a swivel, and a little weight. So you get this hook right here. You also get this little swivel thing right here and you get a little nail weight right there. So the first thing you do is insert this nail weight into the uh, rear end of the lure like this to give it some back weight, I guess, like so, as you can see. Then I'm just gonna attach this little swivelly thing to the hook like so. And then all I do is just simply Texas rig this soft plastic. So there you go guys, that is the basic helicopter rig right there. Fairly simple, let's put it in the water and see what it looks like. I'm not gonna lie, this rig looks really ridiculous and I feel a little bit embarrassed actually throwing this out in public, but uh, if it catches fish, I'll brave the embarrassment. All right, we're all rigged up, let's see what it looks like. All right, so let's throw this thing around. All right, so I just made a couple casts of this bait and I have to say, first impressions, this bait's weird. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little weird, however, it does move a lot of water, uh, which is very, very interesting. This whole bait basically just spins like uh, the blade of a spinner. If I was going to describe the action of this bait, I would describe it as a soft plastic buzz bait style bait. Now, one thing right off the bat, this bait actually moves water. If you throw it out and you crank it in, this puppy will actually create quite a wake and you can fish it just under the surface and it creates a nice wake and like I said, it moves a ton of water. The thing that's kind of weird about this bait is that the whole bait spins. Like, the whole bait. Now, generally speaking, when you are fishing soft plastics, such as a soft plastic swim bait, you do not want the bait to be doing this. You want the bait to track straight, and you want the tail to flutter. This bait totally throws that out the window. Like I said, the whole bait rotates, again, like a propeller in the water, and that's what creates that wake, and that's what moves that water. Now, like I mentioned, you can fish this bait under the surface like a soft plastic buzz bait, but you can fish this bait under the water as well. You can throw it out, let it sink, and then give it a couple reels. The bait will spin, move some water, and then you can let it slowly sink back down. That is the method that I chose to fish today, uh, just because the weather was really cold and I didn't think the bass were in a mood to chase something up on the surface. Alrighty, so the fish at the canal weren't biting too well. I did get a couple hits there, but I think those fish were so small they couldn't actually get the bait in their mouth. So it is a different day, obviously, and uh, let me just say, it's cold today. But nevertheless, I'm out here trying to catch a fish with this ridiculous lure. I am now fishing a private farm pond, and I know for a fact that the fish in here are insanely aggressive. These things will eat almost anything, so if I can't catch a fish here with this stupid lure, it ain't happening anywhere else. Let's see what I can do. We did it, we caught a fish on the helicopter lure right there, look at that. Look at that guys, we caught a fish on the helicopter lure. Boom. That took forever, wow. Nice fish right there, beautiful bass. Put him back. We caught a fish. I didn't think we were gonna get anything with this thing today. I wasn't hardly getting any hits and the hits that I was getting were just very peckish. Nothing was hitting it hard. So guys, as you saw from that footage, I was able to catch a nice bass on this bait, and to be honest with you, when I started making this video, I was fairly confident that I could catch a bass with this bait. Like, this thing is weird and wacky, but it moves water and it produces vibration, and if you find bass that are hungry enough, they'll hit just about anything. And keep that in mind, the pond that I was fishing was a pond that has a lot of aggressive fish. These fish will hit almost anything, and that's one of the main reasons why I went there is because I wanted to give this bait the best possible chance of succeeding. If I took this bait to one of my local lakes that I fish quite often, I would say that I would be hard pressed to get a bite on this thing. I would have to fish it very, very hard and very, very long because the fish generally in that lake are very, very smart and I don't think they would really go for something like this. Now in that YouTube video that I referenced earlier, which I'll link down in the description below if you wanna check it out, Roland Martin actually talks a little bit more about this bait. And he says that when they initially designed this bait, its main purpose was to be fished 
in grass. They wanted something kind of like a weedless buzz bait that they could fish primarily over submerged grass in Florida. Now, granted, this lure is weird, okay? And it's a little hokey, and it's a little dorky, but in the end of the day, I think you could catch fish with this thing. Like Roland said, if you fish this over shallow grass and you were fishing it up near the surface and it was creating kind of a buzz bait effect, I think you could get some strikes on this. Now, as far as fishing this in my local lakes, I don't know. I think it'd be a little bit of a challenge to try and catch a fish with this, but if you are fishing, let's say, a farm pond or a lake that doesn't get a lot of pressure, or if you're fishing over, again, submerged grass near the surface, I think you could do okay. So, would I recommend this bait to you? Uh, no, I would not recommend this bait to you. The problem is technology has come a long way since the initial release of the helicopter lure. This may have been something kind of unique back in the day, but nowadays if you want a weedless type buzz bait lure, you can just pick up a frog. This will literally have the same action. It'll move lots of water and it's totally weedless and this actually imitates an actual frog. It's got a nice frog profile. So I think lures like this make this bait rather obsolete. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, be sure to check out my line of signature series baits. Link in the description. If you buy some of those, it helps me to keep doing what I do here on the channel. Also check out the Amazon affiliate links down below as well. Again, there's links to gear and some of my favorite lures. And if you buy through those, I get a little bit of kickback and it helps me to keep making videos. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, stay hooked. I'll see you later.